Hello, wrestling fans. Point Charisma. Hey, that's me. And today I'm with Jeremiah Plunkett. Yellow again, everybody. Jeremiah Plunkett and Quentin Charisma. And once again, we are smack dab along ringside and ready to go with another big week of the Territorial Wrestling Review Podcast. Quentin, how are you doing, my friend? All right, I guess. <laughs> These are killing me, dude. They're hurting so bad. I think it's the rain. I know you've just been killing me today. You know, I never thought that was a real thing until I had my shoulder surgery. And now I, I get that, the whole lot pain in the joint when the yeah, yeah, changes. it's just weird. Yeah, and you're younger, you're like, yeah, it's just a bunch of malarkey, you know, old people just yapping. But man, it's true. I don't know why, but it, it yeah, they, I mean, my knees hurt it constantly, but the last two days, they've been just killing me. So there's got to be something about it, you know. It's, don't know why, but it, it really does. It, and uh, the uh, rain affects it. I don't know. And you beat yourself up for a lot of years doing a lot of splashes and a lot of, by Quentin bombs in the corner or missing them too. So, a lot of a lot of pain and impact on the body. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you think about it. I mean, coming straight down your knees and all you having on a pair of trace knee pads. And a lot of the rings they were, you know, around here were bumping rings. So not much padding, but a lot of bounce. So you know, you was getting plywood, a uh, piece of carpet, and canvas. You know. And, and so even worse much, if they had a spring in the middle. Yeah, the most spring rings, which most of them did. <laughs> most of them did have spring, but those corners were so they were they didn't give, uh, and there was no padding because there were bumping rings, and so a lot of years of doing that, it, it, it coming straight down your knees don't help. So yeah, and that, and that should be a oh. lesson to anybody thinking about getting into the professional wrestling industry. Know what you're signing up for. Oh, you know, last week we were talking about uh, that match on uh, the WMF YouTube channel when me and D- uh, Dita Brock came hanging tough. That was the first night of hanging tough. That was the, f- did you notice the revolving leg door, uh, the, revolving le- the revolving door leg drops? I did. That just happened. I mean, it did. we didn't talk about it in the back or nothing. We just started doing them. And, I and hit all it, those he- leg drops all the years probably leads to your lower back problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my hip and back, that's why the, you know, it, it is. But it's like I hit it, and he hit it, and I got back up, and I hit it again. I said, I told him, I said, keep going, keep going. And we, it was just, as I was saying, he was so green, but me and him clicked. So it was crazy how we actually clicked when, you know, but he was so green. Usually I don't connect with green guys except for you and him. And <laughs> Hang it tough. <laughs> You were a lot more advanced, trust me. But no, it just, it was just me and him clicked really, just, just clicked. So, hey, if you remember, I begged you to do the name because you didn't want to do it. Yeah, I didn't. And I was like, come on, man. Yeah. Let me turn my volume up. I can barely hear you. That's a lot. Right. Yeah. And I actually had it down on 38. I had it down low. Oh, um, but yeah, it just, um, it's weird how me and him clicked though. Um, him being so green, and that was our first night together, and we, yeah, that's cool though. Yeah, no, it and people say people just, and people say I, I didn't ever like young young guys. You know, I mean, what the crap? You had a reputation about yourself. Not you really. had a short fuse. There's a difference between a short fuse and not liking young guys. Because that's all I ever worked. Seemed like, <laughs> especially the last ten years that I worked. That's all I ever worked. Yeah. Oh, piss. I dropped a bottle. But yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, it was cool. I just remember that we talked about how we just formed from off from that night. And then I forgot to even mention about the, the leg drops. And yeah, it was the, it was crazy because like I said, it just come out of nowhere, you know. But um, I hope we had some more matches on there. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, Kevin Jones and the Alabama Kid just dropped. Um, no spoilers on that. I haven't watched it yet. Quentin has. Uh, he's, got, yeah. he's got some more craziness uh, set up to drop in the coming weeks. And Kevin's match, you still need to watch it, but it would, they didn't let have they let have a mic for some reason, so we didn't get the the inter, the uh, entertaining part of it. So I don't know why they didn't let him have a mic for. <laughs> but there was no mic work on this match like it was the other one. So, but still watch it anyway. <laughs> oh man, yeah, he um, he just puts more hanging tough on there. It's like, it's crazy. He was the manager for Hanging Tough, and 
We're hardly even on there. <laughs> Slow build. Slow build, okay. <laughs> Got to put yourself over, Monty. Come on now. <laughs> oh, my. All right. Well, tonight, Where are we going? We, tonight we are going to Japan. Uh, let me get the exact details here. Now that this is actually in Spanish, so this isn't going to help me. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? It sure is. They don't have a translation gimmick on it. Not on, uh, not on what I was watching. But uh, let's see. <laughs> but this, while I'm looking this up, this is from a SWF, which is Super World of Sport and a WWF crossover show called Super Wrestle 91. Uh, let's see. It is December 12th, 1991 from the Tokyo Dome in Tokyo, Japan. I could have totally guessed that, I guess. Um, <laughs> but the match is Hulk Hogan versus Jinichiro Tenru. Um, do you want me to run down the card we had beforehand? Or do yeah, because it, since it's a super, it, since it's a super, it's a big show, and a lot of people don't know about the SWS, but just yeah, go ahead and let's give us a card. And be, you know, be probably interesting to see. All right, so let's see. Da, 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 da. First match we have Masakutsi Funaki versus Jerry Flynn. A lightning foot. foot, Jerry Flynn. All right. Then we had Ultimo Dragon versus Jerry Estrada. That'd have been good. We have an interpromotional tag team match: King Haku and Yoshiaki Yatsu versus Ashirahara and Davy Boy Smith. Oh, so that'd probably be pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Let's see, the Rockers took on George and Sunji Takano. Okay. The Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase with Sensational Sherry versus the Texas Tornado Kerry Von Erich. Okay. Rick the Model Martel versus Naoki Sano. Mm -hmm. Koji Ishinriki versus Yoshiaki Fujiwara. I don't think you put on the armbar. Huh? Yeah. I don't think you put him in the armbar in the match. Uh, World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Championship. The Legion of Doom against the Natural Disasters. And finally, in your main event, Hulk Hogan versus Janichiro Tenru. I was hoping the Road Wars, I figured they would have worked a Japanese team. Hmm. Yeah, you'd, you'd think. I don't. I don't know what uh what that was, but I, I'm wondering if. So I don't know. So no. So much know about Typhoon, but I know uh, obviously Earthquake did very well in Japan. Yeah, yeah, he was over over there. Yeah, so I definitely. wonder if I wonder if he worked more his Japanese style. I bet he did. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because he yeah he was really over in Japan. So yeah, I'm not thinking about that now. Yeah, I guess yeah that would make sense. Um, but this is uploaded on YouTube by Paulo Mendoza. Again, the match is Hulk Hogan versus Genichiro Tenru, WWF, and SWS Super Wrestle 1991. Quentin, are you zeroed out and ready to go? Yep, ready to go. All right, and we will hit play in three, two, one, play. All right. And we've got the Tokyo Dome with all the lights out. Oh, we've got some smoke. Got some Japanese glowing. lanterns. Yeah, some lantern gimmicks. Oh, we got we got a big cool stage. Yeah, there's a yeah. That's... Yeah, we got the, all the house lights out. Mm -hmm. There's Tenru. Going on his yellow and red robe. What the heck? He's got he's got those silky satin robes. But... Gimmick infringement. Terry's mad. <laughs> He was wearing those before. You talking about Terry Gordy? No, Hulk. Oh, I was like, I was like, I don't think Terry Gordy wore a robe. <laughs> oh, what is that on the back? Is that an owl? <laughs> what is that? I think that's a white tiger. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> well, it was like no, feathers. No, it looks like, no, it's a dragon. Oh, okay. Hmm. I wonder if real Americans playing. And so I hit it real fast. What it says. So I, I listened to the video a little bit. Unless it's dubbed in, real American is in fact playing. Okay. 
That is a big stage for 91. Because New York wasn't using stages then. And this is trimmed down Hulk Hogan. Not quite WCW, NWO trimmed down Hulk Hogan. No, but no. Definitely, definitely trimmed down Hulk Hogan. Oh, yeah, because 91, definitely. Well, he had to start dropping some of his size because, you know, you know his joints are starting to uh, to feel that like carrying all that size. And, and notice Trump's his entrance, already... like way less showy. Oh, definitely. He did a little gimmick at, on top of the stage, you know, with the arms. But, oh, because, you know, in Japan, he never was Flash. Yeah, just number one, Ichiban. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, that's the oh, the the lit the what's the word I'm looking for? Oh Jesus. What? Hulk just pie faced the referee. Did he? I didn't even yeah. see that. <laughs> but that was oh probably the God. in his WBF years, this was probably the most unflashiest entrance he's had, you know? Yeah. He just come out there, walked out there, did a couple things, and that was it. He pie faced that referee. I don't. I didn't even see that. (laughs) Oh man! Yeah, look at him. He's trimmed down big time, especially his his shoulders and upper, his shoulders and chest don't look as big at all. I mean, compared to what I mean, still, but compared to what he was, you know. Yeah, compared to the height of the 80s. Yeah. Oh, look at that. There. there you Who go. Who says yeah. Hogan can't wrestle? And that's why, kind of why I picked this match, because, like, we know that, and we've heard people say that, but they're like, this match will show that. And this is later Hogan wrestling. Yeah, exactly. You know, this isn't yeah. when he's going there and, you know, axe bombering Anoki off the apron and knocking him yeah. out. You know what I mean? Like, this is this is later Hogan. He's not young yet. Yeah. I mean, he's not yeah. old, but he's not young. Yeah, I we know what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. Oh, we got the fist taped up too. You didn't see that a lot. I didn't even know. Sure does. Wow. Is he gonna get to the ropes? Break it? Yep. There he goes. Tender got almost a Jerry curl going, don't he? <laughs> yeah. They're starting off, starting out slow. Then they'll taper off from there. There you go. Oh, yeah. was he going? Was he going for Nisiguri, or what was he doing? He's trying to kick. He's trying to kick him. I think Tenru did use an Nisiguri, so I may be wrong on that, but I think he did. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh! Nice drop toe hold by Hogan. Oh, he got him. He got him locked up somehow. Is he like he's, he's got a double wrist lock in the front? He doesn't have a hook behind. Now he's kind of got kind of a cobra. Yeah, similar, but, but more just arm control and running the half. Yeah, now running the half with an ankle pick. Goes to the cover. I like it. They a little struggle. It ain't so it ain't smooth. So I like that. Oh, big job! <laughs> Tinder's like, we're not in the states. I can chop you here. <laughs> Look at the chest on Tinder, by the way. Yeah, he's thick. He's not cut up, but he's really thick. A lot, he's, got, he's got a lot more weight on him than he did in his All Japan days. Yeah, no, absolutely. He was, he was pretty trim during All Japan. Yeah. Oh, I would tell him to get in the center of the ring. <laughs> Uh-oh. A little standoff here. It was really cool. A little subtle heel from Hogan. Not not pull out, but just a little subtle heel. Yeah. Well, nice go behind by Tenru. Hogan go behind. Oh, look at there. Look at him hook the le- look at that. Wow. Oh, Tiru. He's got his arm. 
Is he going to Kimura him? I think he's going for a Kimura. A Kimura. He may have been going for it, but Hogan ain't going to give it to him. No. <laughs> he's got his work in the wrist now. Oh, another chop. <laughs> Hogan complained to the ref. <laughs> that uh, that looks like Earl Hebner. I think that's Earl Hebner. It does, don't it? It's kind of odd. He didn't pie face and Earl Hebner. <laughs> no, no, he didn't pie face the ref. He pie faced the announcer. Oh, okay. I didn't even see the announcer was. Was he American? He's trying yeah. to come back out to the center again. I think he's trying to come to the center. Terry got that uh that Terry Funk hair. Yeah, he did. So my head does remind you of Terry Funk hair. There you go. Nice headlocks. But oh, look at that. And we're looking to the drop toe hold. Oh, was he look at him? It's floating over to the front, to the front chancery. <laughs> hey, and he put uh what, what was that uh that talk show host that he put out with the with the front headlock. Oh, uh, Richard Belzer. Yeah. Well, again, he let him fall bust at the back of his head. <laughs> oh, got him back of the ropes. We'll get a clean break. Oh, Hogan pushed him off. I like the, 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 the animosity there, you know? I, I like that Hogan knows his audience. Yeah, yeah. He knows big bootleg drop ain't gonna get it done here, you know? Exactly. I like how he's he's not going right and they're they're both hesitant, you know. Hogan Hogan backs up again to his medium in the middle. It's like the third time I think he's did that. I think he well, knows they're both in the corners because they don't want to get chopped. Yeah. <laughs> but I like how they're both really, you know, taking their time, you know. Uh oh. Oh. Hogan smacked me. And <laughs> Tenor don't look happy. Yeah, Hogan smacked the taste out of his mouth. <laughs> Worse than he did that announcer. <laughs> oh, Hogan right the eyes? Wow. Oh, big chop, big punch. Chop. Oh, right the eyes again. Big punch. Are we gonna give me gonna give him the boot? Nope. Oh, that's the clothesline. Catch the boot. Trip. Oh, barred the leg. They're in the ropes. Uh oh, they're on the floor. And we don't get any floor action. I was chasing him back in. So you'll cut him off when he comes in. Oh, oh. Tenor ate that elbow. <laughs> Look like he got it in the throat almost. Whips him in. Big boot. He didn't, I, he didn't, he didn't bump right off. <laughs> he turned Japan because that would have been the finish if it was in the States. He didn't bump right off. He took about three or four steps. And then he went down. Big knee to the back. Got the rear chin lock on him. He got the old school chin lock. Oh. Out an hour. The what? An hour in the traditional one. Yeah. He's look, Hogan's looking around with people. Are they chanting for Tenru? I know. He turned around, look at the crowd. Look at the, ooh, another knee, big knee, another knee. They're, Hogan. they're definitely behind Tenru. They're coming up as he oh, comes yeah. up. Yeah. Punches. Some of probably the better punches I've ever seen Hogan throw. Which in the corner, big clothesline. Big follow Went down on that one. Line. Was he on catapulting? No, nope, boss and crap. You know, that's the mission Hulk Hogan's known for. <laughs> that's the first time I've ever seen him do a boss and crab. That's crazy. 
That's the first time I've seen him do a hold besides a bear hug. <laughs> Especially wearing yellow. <laughs> I mean, he's got that little that little kind of cross face he always goes to after the uh, drop toe hold. That's about it. Yeah. Oh, Tenru's mad. Oh, Tenru. <laughs> Rolling attack, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was supposed to be. <laughs> oh, my a little front rolling. <laughs> I think Tenru watched that Ultimo Dragon match earlier and was trying to steal Dragon's little flip kick. <laughs> no, that wasn't Dragon. I'm sorry. That was Liger who did that flip kick. Okay. I, was, I, was like, I don't know who did it, but it's funny that you bring it up and then roll into a kick. <laughs> oh. Oh, gets some shots to the throat. Hogan's cheating like crazy, ain't he? Shoots yeah, him off. Got, we, oh, we got, ooh, dude. That was a nice flying knee. And he's selling it. That's awesome. You notice? Oh, Tim, the see Andy. it? And then Seguri on him. He rolled for heaven. But yeah, that knee was nice. And he and the Seguri powder out. Oh, we're on the floor. Get one of them little chairs. Here we go. Oh, hits the leg. He's working the leg. Oh. Look nice. at Hulk's legs. He's slimmed down big time. Yeah. And he's still a big guy, but compared to his, you know, the, the heyday of the of the 80s, yeah. Oh, close on the corner. Other insecurity. Go for cover. He's under the ropes. Foot's on the ropes. Yeah, he's oh, his whole body. He's he's trimmed down a lot. Toe hold. Oh, here you go. Grab it. Wrench it up. Is he gonna grab the arms? He got. I'm trying to see if he's got Hogan's. No, yeah. okay. I thought he was gonna hook Hogan's arm for a minute. No, he's just sitting oh, in that oh, oh. Nice elbows. Yeah, first elbow. Oh, oh, what a kick! Right to the face. That's a little snug ski, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Hulk's like, brother, I'm trying to give you the best payoff you've ever got. Might not. Yeah, yeah. Power driver? No, power bomb. Oh, I think that. No, no. Uh, I know what I was going to ask you now. Remind me after this. Gotcha. I think that was. Uh, Tenru must finish, maybe. Really? I mean, one uh, of them. Yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Drops the leg. Drops the leg. He's going to kick out. Yep, he kicks out. <laughs> I was like, what? The leg didn't work. <laughs> He's trying to get Tenru up. Was he in the big boot? Clothesline. Big That's running funny. clothesline. Uh oh, what's it calling for? A cover? <laughs> I think that was the axe bomber. Mm. That, that was the Spanish when he was over there. Yeah. So give him another one. No, the boot. Tenry catches it. Hogan with the insecurity. Oh, but he gets And Tenry with the no sell into the, <laughs> the leg bars. <laughs> Oh, that was awesome. He knows so Hogan's insecurity and grab his legs. Look at that cross face to try to get out of that. Yeah, I was going to say, he's got his legs and Hogan's got his head. Somebody bleeding? I look like there's some, some drops of blood on the... Is Hogan's nose bleeding? Not that I can tell, but maybe. I saw I saw little, little droplets on the. Oh, that could have been from that water good. kick. Oh yeah, those kicks look good. Nice chop. Another nice chop. What we got here? Shoots him off. Uh, <laughs> train wreck. <laughs> Hogan, two elbows. You gonna go for three? Nope, go for the leg drop. Surely he's not gonna beat him with that. Interesting pin. 
<laughs> the north south cover there. <laughs> yeah. Hogan's actually, that was three. He said, no, he kicked out. So what are you going? Oh, catches the boat. Another Insiguri. He's still. <laughs> Insecurities. Oh, another clothesline. He won't go down. Here we go. He's gonna go down this one. Boom! There's the big one. That's the cover. That was it. Yeah. He hit him with like five total axe bombers okay. and two leg drops. What he, I mean, well, he hit him with what there in a the row at the anyway, what three of them there? Hit him the with three right in a row. Yeah. Okay, that's what it was. Okay. But Tenry wouldn't sell that his insecurity for nothing. <laughs> he not going to sell yeah, it. Yeah, no, he wasn't going to bump Hogan's insecurity. Well, if, if that was one of his if one of his main moves, he wasn't going to. I don't blame him. They basically killed each other's finishes here. Yeah, they did. Yeah, because we got the folding power bomb and the and the NZ from Tenry. Well, big matches. I mean, you really got to take. You know, little pants to. brother's wearing. Yeah, he got some pants. Look at that. He's wearing the Zubai's pants. Nice. Now we got we got Hogan being a baby face. Nah, he's doing his he's doing the American Hogan now. There he goes. Hey, they're reacting for it though. I'll give them that. Yeah, they're actually they're pop, they're popping on it. So you can tell this I is a commercial a release. Yeah, so this that's a nice trophy. Yeah, this is obviously oh. from the the VHS. Hey, there's a nice uh, side moon salt. Yeah. Davy boy, gas out of his mind. So, he's so bloated, man. Yeah, this is probably. I bet this was a commercial release. Yeah, this kind of makes me want to get it though. I know. I was going to look watch, it up. Watching these replays during the credit. Yeah, go see if uh, Roy Lucher's got it somewhere. I'm sure he does. <laughs> oh, he just dropped brother on his back of his head, didn't he? No, look at his back in the corner. <laughs> oh, he's leg kicking the stew out of him. Oh, there was that chop in the throat. Yeah, Hogan. That's a, that's a good little match. Yeah, that's fun. I mean, you oh. can tell this was probably. <laughs> oh, I'll have to all right. Uh, all right, so this is the end of the wrestling. This was obviously taped over something else, but this is hilarious. <laughs> it's Paul Abdul in J Japanese. <laughs> I'm going to turn the volume. I'm going to go ahead and cut mine off. <laughs> it's in it's Japanese. Oh, we got a soccer game now. This dude didn't edit nothing, did he? <laughs> yeah, because it's still going on for two more minutes. So I love the thing. He's got a soccer game on now. That's what I always used to love. So uh, for, for some backstory, like a lot of my first tapes and stuff I got from Quentin. And he used to have these tapes that I called the, the Weekend Wrestling. And it'd be every show that aired that week. <laughs> and he did not edit the commercials out. And sometimes that was some of the most fun, especially – on like the syndicated shows and like the territory stuff though. So like if you when I got Smoky Mountain from you, now I don't know if that was your recording, but when I got get that Smoky, my, Smoky Mountains what my record. The Smoky Mountains were great somebody. because they'd have like a gospel choir or like a truck stop <laughs> comedian commercial where you could call in and get their tape. Um and then like the USWA would have, I don't know, whatever local business in Memphis was sponsoring them. It's Nashville. It was, oh, that, it was a national feed, yeah. So whatever local, you know, <laughs> that's what I'd like to when I would watch uh, when I'd watch wrestling growing up would be when they'd have to have a wrestler in the advertisement, like Colorado <laughs> Kid for Mufflers, yes. Mufflers Breaks and More, uh, as well as and, Steve uh, Simmons for Mufflers Breaks and More. It was both. Uh, the first one was the first Mufflers Breaks and More was um, was Colorado Kid. And then um, the uh, uh, Chase's was with, with a transmission. Oh, yeah. The transmission yeah, yeah. He, shop. He, he body slammed the transmission that he said yeah, they did it, not gimmick for him. And you could tell it too, because 
man, he was struggling to get that thing up. <laughs> it was like, holy smokes. Yeah, you could uh, you could tell that thing was heavy. But it's like, uh, you, you talk about those commercials around that time period. That's when the uh, payday loans first started in Tennessee. And it seemed like you'd start, the, like the first one, It's yeah, I've been seeing on, on the local wrestling, was uh, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> yeah. His commercials was on like every wrestling in, in Nashville. The Lone Ranger, and uh, the yeah, it was, and uh, Bert did all the all his uh, when he, especially from the when he was NAW uh, when he first came to Nashville in '97. Uh, all of his local sponsors, it was him a Colorado kid doing them. The one where they go to that Chinese restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> just call a kid. He said, "I got big plate of noodles." Takes a big bite, looks at the camera, and does a big thumbs up. It's like, <laughs> it's like the cheesiest cheese of all time, man. But yeah, those. Uh, yeah, come on, I tell you, <laughs> and there's that one. I swear, I showed it like two or three times every week on USWA. The old guy in the cowboy hat and uh, talking about the 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 pH level of your water and that stuff. <laughs> I remember that guy. It's like. That commercial was on all the time. Yeah, it was. That's like when I get back in the tape trading days, I get tape. And man, some of the commercials were just great. I did. I got some tapes one time from early eight of early early eighties Florida. Uh, they were ta- they were recorded not in Florida. But, well, some of them I had were, but this I got a batch of tapes from early 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 eighty Florida, <laughs> and it it was taped. In New York City, on a Spanish channel, those commercials were funny. <laughs> you you watching Dusty Rose? They're bleeding like stuff. Oh, and then they go to commercial. I don't even remember. That. <laughs> and then, you know, and it's like, huh? <laughs> and then everything writes in Spanish and everything. It's like, okay, but yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. Some of those old. Uh, that's one good thing about the tape train days. Nobody hardly ever edited commercials. If you had a whole show, hardly anybody edited commercials out. Because that's more time, you know. And uh, <laughs> so you don't always get, most of the time you get commercials. And it was, it was uh, real, it was real it's another, another time. I'll we'll get off this topic real fast, get back to the match. Um, when I got some of that WOW out of Pensacola, Florida. Uh, and I remember I was watching it. And it was when uh, Fox first came out. And they were only on like certain days of the week. And they were showing the commercials for the shows that was coming on. And it was like, oh my gosh, it's like none of those shows like made it like out of the first season. It was crazy. Yeah. Some of the shows that they were showing on there. But uh, yeah, get back to the match we just watched. Um that was really good. Um it definitely falls in the criteria what we've been trying to do is find something totally different. Yeah. Because that was Hogan. You know, you know, like I said, a lot of people you know, people have seen Hogan early eighties Japan because it, it you know, it was real popular. I mean, there's a lot of that floating around. But to see him in Japan work that style in the red and yellow. Yeah. That was what was really good about this. Um, you know, and you don't see that hardly. I said, you can find the old stuff. But well, there's a went, match out there that they did. I can't remember if it was all Japan or New Japan at the time. But they did a crossover with another Japanese office. And he worked Hanson in the main in the red okay. and yellow. And that was now. So, it's, I mean, it's very rare you see him in the like, and you know he was wrestling, you know, did moves. But yeah, like you said, the um, the big boot and the leg drops wasn't taken out. Um, Tenru, and then you know the he Tenru was giving him the inseguries. He would kick out. You know, so, yeah, it was it was really good. You know, wasn't that long? I mean, it flew by. Uh, I liked at the beginning how um, they were both really hesitant. You know, they were filling each other out. That was really good. So just going in there all fast and everything. Because, you know, it's two big stars. You know, they know they get taken out real fast by each other. So they were, you know, they, they were pacing it. But they their pace of the way that stuff they were doing where they were, you know, feeling each other out. And then Hogan kept telling him to come meet him in the middle because he didn't want to get caught up in the ropes. You know, it was good psychology like on that. Um, so, yeah, it was really, really good. So that one kick he gave him, Tinder Gabe looked really, really snug. Yeah, that was um, a quad kick, right? The eye. Uh... Yeah, that was snug, but uh, everything else, I mean, it was laid in, but nothing, you know, hurt, you know, you had hurt on or nothing, but it was all like, you could tell stuff was laid in good. It was snug. Um, but yeah, Hogan wrestled, really, he wrestled a lot in that match. So, yeah, if anybody wants to see a match, you know, let 
you know, of later Hogan actually wrestling when all these years, there went years and years where he didn't have to, he could still wrestle. So that, that was yeah. cool. Yeah, no, and I, you know, I'm 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 different than most people. Like while I was into Hogan when I when I was really young, I didn't become a big fan of wrestling until I was probably 10 and that would have been 96 so like I'm used to thinner Hogan as a matter of fact I'm used to heel Hogan and I love yeah. heel Hogan is so entertaining to me and it makes sense because I'm also a massive fan of southern wrestling and heel Hogan was nothing but southern wrestling oh yeah it wasn't, know, it wasn't. gimmicks and back rakes and cowarding off and you know what I mean yeah. it was like he was yeah. all good stuff Wrapped in the world. Well, the best part was the beard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All, <laughs> was, all of a sudden, now I'm a bad guy. I've got black stubble. Yeah, it's so hokey looking. And just like, yeah, it, it just changed overnight. Where he's, he's, <laughs> I got black stubble now. <laughs> just, yeah, it was so uh, over the top and heat getting, you know. And yeah, so yeah, what you know of Hogan, you grew up on a totally different one than I did. And, but at this time, though, yeah, he had really um, trimmed out a lot compared to his, um, especially his heyday, say like 86, 87-ish, yeah. 88, you know, especially 86, 87. He was just, whoo, he was just large. I was a fan of Hogan when I was younger, and, you know, I had the Hulk plush, I had the Hulk rule shirt, had a Hulk poster up, like, actually I had the Hulk poster up, it was like an 80s Hulk poster, but this was like, when I was playing high school football, it was up <laughs> my, uh, in my work in the garage, like where my workout set was. At Hulk Hogan. <laughs> at Hulk Hogan and Taz. Hulk Hogan and who? Taz. Say Taz? Taz. Okay, you're, human, you're cutting human out. Human suplex machine, Taz. Taz, gotcha. That's an odd pair. <laughs> yeah, really weird. But, <laughs> but yeah, so, I, I mean, I was a fan of that Hogan, but when I became a big, like, hardcore crazy fan, of wrestling was when I was about 10. It had, you know, thinner, insanely tan Hogan. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when he, when he changed ethnicities almost like, yeah, he was so brown. <laughs> yeah. How, how he doesn't have cancer today is amazing. Like he was so dark. Yeah, I know. It's like, uh, it, Arn Anderson had that tan about then too. He got really dark, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. D- double, double. A Actually, and, you and think Hogan, about it. I feel like most ever it seemed like a lot of those guys in WCW that time because because Flair was like in his darkest around that time, wasn't he? I could be wrong. I, on I that, think but Flair it hit like, his darkest a little before that, but yeah, there was times when Flair okay. was was real dark too. Yeah, they all they all got into tanning pretty heavy. But yeah, Hogan though was like just brown as could be. I mean, you know? Yeah, he looked so <laughs> awesome. Oh yeah, he looked good. Look, he looked like a million dollars. And the same with Arn when he was that tan. It just looked awesome. Yeah. As bad as it is for you, it's true. Tan fat looks better than white fat. Exactly. <laughs> now, now, tan fat looks a lot better than white fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony Fox special. Yep, it's true. It, it is, man. But, yeah, it, but yeah, it, that was, you see, now, when did he leave and was gone for a while, then he came back at WrestleMania? Oh, was it 92 he came back? 92, he left, didn't he? Then it had to be like 93 he came back. It was WrestleMania 94 is when he came back. Okay. So he left in 93-ish sometime. He came back and pretty much like did the European tour and then left. Yeah, he, he went around much in that 92, 93-ish time period. And then 94, he came back for just a second and was gone again. Um, but yeah, yeah, he, he, I think he was off doing what, Thunder in Paradise? I think it was Thunder in Paradise, I think, wasn't it, around that time period? Um, well, he did some movies. Um, did a couple movies, and so he, he had a lot of like that. It was terrible. What was it? It was the third installment of the Three Ninjas movie, and it was bad. Okay, and then did, he did one, one like a babysitter or something. Yeah, that was still in in WWF. That was Mister Nanny. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This time period around the early nineties. Yeah, he was, and then I don't think he did. did he, I don't know if he did Thunder in Paradise. Was that all when he's in WCW? Thunder in Paradise was he wasn't with WWF, okay. and Bischoff met him on the set, set. of Thunder in Paradise. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Okay. To lure him over. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, this was he was still top guy, but yeah, he was. Um, you can tell he he was slimming down. You know, 
he was he knew his he had other plans, you know, yeah. with his movies and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was like I said, it was a good match. I enjoyed it, and I still I just realized I still had picked <laughs> between the three that I was gonna. I had three <laughs> things narrowed down. Day, gum it. Let me go over to my thing channel. So, are we going to narrow those down on air, or are you going to do a mystery bag? I'm gonna narrow them down here in a second. Okay. But I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Uh, well, okay. Uh, what I was gonna ask you, I just remembered it when I was watching that. <laughs> uh, that that uh, thing you sent me on Messenger, um, with uh, oh boy, power bomb and oh boy on his head. Dude, like arched his neck. I was like, what happened there? So you know, he said tuck and he arched it. Is that what yeah. it was? I kept watching. I was like, how did his head get underneath there? Oh, my so he, God. Okay. So that's how he, I was wondering how I kept watching. I was like, how is his head getting up underneath there? He you like powerbombed himself into a neck bridge. <laughs> I, mean, oh. I kept watching like five or six times. I was like, I kept, I was like, how does his head? I was like. I don't know that? why. For some reason, that made me sicker than. Uh, you know that that kid in the backyard who like jumps around and turns around. His legs turn the yeah, he goes, direction. Oh, he goes grasshopper leg. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> they're both bad. But I, I did. I watched it probably five times. Like, because I've never seen anybody's head get. I was like, how did? Well, I kept saying, like, how did? What went wrong? So that's what it was. Was okay. That makes sense. Why well, his head got up underneath? <laughs> oh my god, it was so scary. It made me feel so bad. It was like, yeah, it gets you one of those uh, feelings in your stomach, you know? Yeah. Oof. All right. Well, we're going to go, and of course, my thing don't show. Just so you know, I'm going to leave all that in. Like, not the awkward silence where you're taking a leak, <laughs> but I'm going to leave the whole okay. conversation in. Oh, that's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, because people need to watch that. Uh, I don't know who it was or anything or where it was at. You probably know more about it. Oh, I have no People idea. Go watch the, that. That is. I saw the video. Yeah. I shared the video, and I said, "I'm done watching this video." Oh, yeah, that was. Uh, mm. Yeah, I can't. That's take rough, it man. Yeah, I just I watch. I you usually don't watch them. Somebody gets hurt like that real bad to keep watching. But I I, I kept on trying to figure out how did it get to that point, you know? And I couldn't figure it out. And you, and, and what you're saying that makes sense. I don't. I don't know you, why he arched his head back. He probably didn't know any better. Whoa. Yeah. Because everybody knows you tuck your head. <laughs> you That's the main thing you worry about is tucking that head. You know? Oh, yeah, it was bad. All right. So next week, we're going to stay in Japan. Imagine that. And we're going to be in the promotion of J.A.W. It's going to be from December 4th, 1971. Tony Oyenoki versus Dick Murdoch. All right. That'll be good. Yeah. So J A W. I mean, hold on. Is that what I said? Yeah, I'm sorry. J W. J W. Yeah. Correct me. I'm sorry, but <laughs> All right, I was just making sure. I'm... You're like, you're like, wow, they really went. <laughs> they really went. Uh, what's it? Uh, what they call it over there? Or do you work for different promotions? Uh, freelance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They really went freelance and then. Yeah. <laughs> they were in Indies. Place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. JWA, December 4, 71. So it's young Dickie Murdoch and uh, young to America, but not young to Japan, Antonio Inoki. So yeah, I just want to get a Murdoch match in. Um, found a lot of, of uh, like um, his American, you know, Houston stuff. And but it's mostly from, you know, 80s. So and a lot of it was against funk and stuff like that. And I was like, this is going to be, you know. Really good. So, did Murdoch start in the late sixties? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. had well had to be because what sixties? No, he's like mid sixties, like sixty six, sixty seven. Okay. I, this was at least actually he it was it might have sixty five. Was maybe sixties was it not? Late sixties, early seventies. Yeah. Okay. They went from like I think they started at like sixty eight or sixty nine, while we up to the early seventies, like seventy one or something. Um. Watching some of those clips you see of Texas Outlaws with Dusty just flying around the ring. Yeah. It's amazing. Crazy, ain't it? Yeah. 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 So I, I, I want to get something a little, a little different from you know, him. Because you find a lot of stuff of him against the Funks and Hanson. And then I said, you know, so I was like, that's really old and 71. So he, you know, 
he hadn't put on any 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 weight yet, which it never really slowed him down. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's you really young at this time, so it should be really good. So it's gonna like so I had three of them um, picked out, and two of them were actually were Murdoch Japan matches, um, but I, that's when I went. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, it's, and the third one I had picked, I think I might have to scrap it um, all together. It's uh, Dynamite Kid against um, I don't know how you say this name, uh, Ashura Hara. Is that how you say it? From I, I from know. IWE, yeah, he was is from like seventy nine, but the quality is so bad. I kept I keep looking for another another version, but I can't find a, a cleaner version. And this is from, and Roy, it's I got it from Roy Lusher on here, so it's probably gonna be the best quality I can find out of it. But it's yeah. a really good match from what I heard. It, it got a lot of praise. Yeah, so. you think you think Lusher would have the best quality you could get? Yeah, I might have to explain that one out of my. And I'm a, my go to here. So, yeah, that's going to be a good one. It's Dick Murdoch and Kate May. <laughs> I mean, could it be bad? I mean, it's Dick Murdoch. <laughs> yeah, so we I got an possible. exciting week next week to, for the podcast, an exciting match, hopefully. Are we going to be able to do next week? We'll be able to do next week. We'll, we'll talk off- offline about the taping date. But yeah, we'll have to do next week. Okay, because I didn't know. I knew your thing's coming up. Um, Speaking of this, let's get let me, let me get that out there. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Big week wrestling week next week, uh, Saturday and Sunday. The NWA will be putting on two pay per views uh, on Saturday, August the twenty eighth. NWA Empower, an all women's pay per view. We've got a women's championship Invitational, I believe. The winner of the Invitational, and the way the way they're doing it, from what I understand, they're doing it like a gauntlet, right? Okay. And uh, Winner of the gauntlet will face the women's champion the next night at the NWA 73 pay-per-view, 73rd anniversary of the National Wrestling Alliance. Uh, They're also bringing back and doing a tournament for at Empower, the NWA World Women's Champion. And I don't know if you saw the social media posts with this being, ah, okay, with this being something uh, that we're kind of a historical-based podcast. Billy Corgan bought the Burke. So is that is that really the, the Mildred Burke belt? Is that a replica? Yeah, it's Mildred Burke belt. Um, wow. Apparently acquired it through Mildred's daughter or granddaughter, one of the two. Wow. Yeah. Dang. Insane. And the Burke will be in St. Louis at the Chase for everybody to see. Wow. That, I saw the picture and I was like, is it a replica? Because I was like, and I was like, and... Well, don't say replica anywhere on here. I was like, dang, I don't know if that's the real. So it's the real deal. Wow. That's crazy. Insane. I'm... And if people know who, who Mildred Burke is, look her up. She, is the, she was the uh, main women's wrestler before Moolah ever. Everybody thinks Moolah was the, you know, but she was before Moolah. She, she was the top dog of the women's wrestling, what, 30s, 40s? Maybe into, she even going, she might want to do the, well, probably not 30s, but at least 40s was her main, was her really. Was it? I don't know. She had a long run. And she might have had some 30s in there, 30s, 40s, maybe in some 50s. But she was she was the top woman wrestler in, in the country for a long time, Mildred Burke. So that's 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 cool. That's actually the belt, and um, people get to actually see it on um, uh, the same at the, ch- at the and at the chase. That's you know, it's not just at an NBA show, but at the chase, they even you know more. It's the history, you know, is really um, so. You got to give it to Corgan for stepping up, man. That's um, you know, I'm sure he didn't get it cheap. Yeah, and I, I don't, I don't know anything about the deal. If there, if any money yeah. changed hands, I yeah, they haven't, I haven't heard anything. Purchase, yeah, not... and I assume that was a, an assumption. Um, yeah. but yeah, it is, it's wild. Yeah. Now he needs to go get uh, the old um, Fez belt. Now. <laughs> you know, I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was yeah, thinking cause... the exact same thing. See, um. Is that uh, Charlie Thez is still alive, isn't she? I don't know. She lives in Florida. I think she's still. I know Scott Till will know because he's big. For, he's he's uh, even after uh, Lou passed, he um I know he's. I think he said he stayed in contact with Charlie uh, Thez. Um, and let, let me go sure ahead and uh, let me let me run through this rundown of Empower real quick, right? So okay. I told I told you about the uh, let's see the, the ten woman gauntlet style match. Um, the particip- participants are Lady Frost, Tootie Lynn, who Tootie Lynn is a local St. Louis wrestler. 
Uh, she was actually the first person announced, I believe. Uh, Jamie Senegal, Chelsea Green. You'll like this next one, Debbie Malenko. I saw that. Wow. Yeah, Debbie Malenko. Uh, Bianca Corelli, which is the daughter of Santino Morella. Genocide, who if you watch NWA Power, you're already familiar with. Yeah. Uh, Masha Slamovich, who I just watched on AEW Dark with Thunder Rosa, and she's really This woman nailed a half-and-half half suplex with a bridge, and it was beautiful. Wow. So I'm excited. Uh, Thunder Kitty, probably the only person older than the Burke Belt, Thunder Kitty, started wrestling in 1946. <laughs> well, at least her gimmick is. Hey, gimmick gimmick is. hey, 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 hey. Um, <laughs> and finally, just announced today, Kiera Hogan. What? Okay, yeah, I remember her now. And I was like, <laughs> hold it. I, I don't, uh, and then, okay, yeah, I remember. Um, the Frost Lady, where's she from? Because, man, I watched her on uh, the NWA show the other night, and she looked really good. Everything she did looked crisp, um, you know, snug, not stiff, but in there, late, you know, and just looked good. I believe she's out in the Midwest, and she is excellent. You can tell she, she's been around a while. It has to be because her she looked, you know, she looked really. I don't know. She looked good. It looked good. Her stuff looked good. You can tell she she you know it, like I said, I've never seen her before, ever heard of her, but I could tell that yeah she knows what she's doing. So uh, let's see. And then uh, in the tournament for the NWA World Women's Tag Team Championship, we've got the team of the Hex, which is Allison K and Marty Bell. Uh, we have Hell on Heels. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yep. Okay, I was thinking, I, I was like, Allison K. I was like, I, I, that was, um, yeah, 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 never mind. I got you. <laughs> Hell on Heels, which is Renee Michelle and Sahara Seven. Uh, the team of oh, Red man. Velvet and Kylan King from AEW. Wow. And then this just got announced today, the Free Babes. So it's The what? The Free Babes, the playoff free birds. Jazzy okay. Yang, which is the daughter of Jimmy Wang Yang. Hollywood Haley J, who uh, probably most notable, um, she's out of Ohio Valley Wrestling. I believe she's their current women's champion. Oh, is it Hollywood? Maybe. Hollywood Haley oh, J. It is. Yeah, it Hollywood. Is Hollywood Haley J. You're right. Yeah, it's Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood and, uh, soccer, or soccer rock. Here's a soccer rocks, dude. <laughs> she gets and, people and tying it all together, Miranda Gordy. Okay. Uh, also, we have a match for the Impact Knockouts Championship. The Virtuosa, Diana Perrazzo, defends against Melina Perez. And then for the NWA World's Women's Championship, Camille takes on legit Layla Hirsch. Okay. Um, yeah, well, that, I guess about, yeah, that's, that's a really good call. How much is the pay-per-view? Uh, let's see. Over on Fight TV, I know there is a fight bundle. Let me see what the bundle is on Fight TV. You get both so, of them? Both yeah, you get both of them. And the bundle comes to $39.99. It's not bad for two pay-per-views. Yeah, so that, that's, that's both pay-per-views. Uh, that is both Empower okay. and 73. Uh, and I'll, I'll go through this lineup a little, a little quicker, but the lineup was actually just announced for NWA 73 by NWA President Billy Corgan. The matches are NWA World Television cha Champion Tyrus is teaming with Jordan Clearwater and the Masked Man to take on the Pope in the end, Odinson and Perro. No, no, no. Uh, Mickey James will take on Kylie Ray. Uh, there will be a 12-man battle royal. The winner becomes a number one contender for the national championship. Uh, the brawl in the loo. Tom Latimer versus Crimson versus Tim Storm. That will be gross. The that should big be guys good, beating the crap out of each other. Yeah, that should be. That's what I'm saying. That's going to be good. It's going to be hard hitting. Uh, NWA World Women's Championship. The uh, winner of the Invitational Cup Gauntlet versus the winner of Camille versus uh, legit Layla Hirsch. Uh, NWA World Tag Team Championship, La Rebellion, BCS 666 and Mecha Wolf 450 versus Aaron Stevens and Kratos. NWA National Kratos. Championship. Now, what's that? Is he going to be able to wrestle? Yeah, I, th I think he'll be good. Um, NWA National Championship match, James Storm versus Chris Adonis. And finally, for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship, Nick Aldis versus Trevor Murdoch, Championship versus Career. That should be good. So, yeah, both those are available on Fight TV. I think there are still a few tickets for NWA in power, but NWA 73 completely sold out. That's good. That's not bad for 20 bucks each. I mean, you know, a lot of people don't like women's wrestling, but it should be all right. I mean, and then after that, it'll be, two, it'll be two long days of power tapings. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, my. That yeah, big fun. weekend wrestling coming up. And then Friday night, I don't know what's going to happen on AEW, but something. They're leading to a lot of stuff. Is that this Friday? I don't know. On Rampage? A certain debut is supposed to happen? I didn't watch it tonight, so I don't know uh, if it's playing yeah, up they, They're Friday teasing or not. at one or two, one of two best in the world debuting. Yeah. Don't know oh, yeah, which I one know or either of them. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sure they're not going to swerve the people, man. It's just, they just get them for one-offs, and it's really one coming out to introduce the other best in the world, coming out to introduce the other best in the world, and it's Chris Jericho is already under contract. <laughs> I'm saying if they swerve the people and don't give either one of them, uh, Brian Danielson or Punk, that's going to hurt them. People, it's going to be a bad. I, I, I don't think I don't think there's a – Because, I mean – if they don't do one, at least one of them, man, it's that's going to leave such a bad taste in people's mouth. That's that's going to be really bad. So, and I can't say a lot because I don't watch the the current product. I, I mean, I do, yeah. but I, I don't watch the main shows just because I don't want to buy another streaming package. Um, so, but I religiously watch Dark and Dark Elevation, I, and it's some of my favorite stuff because I get to see a mixture of the guys who are currently on their TV as well as up-and-comers that they're looking at. I see some of my friends on there getting opportunities, so it's real cool. Um, I enjoy the commentary team for two different reasons. Like, So one team is Paul White and Tony Schiavone, and they play it real straight. But they've been incorporating Eddie Kingston lately. No, Lord. <laughs> and it's very entertaining. I bet. <laughs> Kingston is awesome. And it's funny because they'll he'll, they'll blow a move and Kingston will just like say what the move is and they're like I mean yeah cool that's what it is and Kingston's like no nah, that's what it is <laughs> um, but then Dark is way more laid back and a lot of inside jokes and it's Taz and Excalibur and every now and then they will have uh, Ricky Starks will hop on commentary and he's pretty funny Taz and Excalibur so, are hilarious so you don't have so you just you don't have so what do you watch your stuff? Do you have any kind of TV service? I've got I mean, a, a TV service. No. Okay. No, I'm, I'm I was like I completely cut the cord. I'm all all streaming apps. Okay. Well, doesn't um, there's one that the one that don't have sports channels. It's pretty cheap, ain't it? I don't know. There's one of them that don't have any but, sports but dude, channels. I've, I've, I've got Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. Uh, it was Hulu, Disney Plus. Uh, I think we have Paramount for some reason. Um, Amazon Prime, like I've, I'm stacked. <laughs> I, I don't need to add another one. And it's not no, on the Hulu you. I've got for some reason. Because I want you to get that Hulu Plus. <laughs> Probably, yeah. So Which is funny because you... WWE and SmackDown are on the Hulu I've got. On but, it's, it's, but, it, but it's not. Um, I know back when I had, when I first started, and this is some years and years ago, when I was, Doing the first start of the streaming services, I know that uh, all the W both W shows on Hulu were edited. They weren't in the yeah. full shows. Yeah. And uh, now when I switch over to Hulu Plus, actually, you know the and I got you know because I got it live, you know, and it was I get it straight live. But um, yeah, so I'm with I got I got two services. I got Spectrum and I got um, uh, YouTube TV. And uh, I always like got Spectrum because it's it's already it comes with my apartment, so it's already figured in. So that's the reason why I got it. But I've had YouTube TV for four years now, and only thing it the only channel it don't have is A and E, uh, and I and but I got it on my Spectrum. So, but uh, but yeah, I've had I've, I've had like every I started with Sling, did Sling, then I did went to was it Direct TV Live, I think is what it was called, and then went to. Hulu Plus, there was another one in there somewhere I did, and then I did um, YouTube TV. Like I said, I've been in it over four years now. And I, it's one thing I don't like about they keep raising the price of it. <laughs> but um, but it's cool because out of all the ones I've had, they had the unlimited DVR. I got probably 5,000 hours of stuff on my DVR. <laughs> Good God. It's like all the other ones, all the other ones that, um, uh, it, um, had a limit. So that was, you know, but, um, and I got I do the ESPN Plus, but and um, I just did the Netflix again because we wanted uh, wanted to watch Cobra Kai, so we got Netflix just for Cobra Kai. <laughs> so oh, 
Have you? I oh, sorry, you don't have them there. Miles is like, have you watched that heels? But you don't have. <laughs> you don't I, have I haven't. Them. But uh, Luke Cox, actually, who I, I work with at NWA, he's a uh, he plays a big part in heels. Does he? I don't, I just I don't think I can watch it. It's just too. So cause they keep showing the, the preview and it goes and he's like he goes that's my character and he's like that, that's the character I created. And I'm like I can't watch it <laughs> just for that that little line right there. You know. I'm interested in it. I'm interested I, in it. I can't. Steve just Stephen Mel line. really yeah. seems to like really appreciate wrestling. So uh, I'm and he's got a big part in it. So I'm interested to see how it is. And it's supposed to be about a a small town independent. Oh yeah. I mean, the whole thing uh, is probably it just. Have you ever been in a dressing room and told somebody that's my character? No, but have I've you ever? Yeah, probably in the last ten years, probably so. Yeah, I think I've probably seen people do it before that. I don't know, but that was one of those words you never said in the in a dressing room. Character, it's your well, gimmick. It's well, not your character. Either way, I've, I've heard people say that too. Oh, well, you can say you're your gimmick. That's different. I've heard. I don't sell. That's my gimmick. Or I don't lose, that's my gimmick. Like, yeah, brother, that's my gimmick too. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, though, I mean, I've never heard him say, that's my character. I've never. It's like, you, you that word wasn't even thought of. Yeah. But what I know, I'm old and, and um, cantankerous and <laughs> stuck in my ways. <laughs> Definitely old. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. But, um, so yeah, I, you know, that's not bad. Like, you know, $20 for each one of those, 40 bucks. If you got the money, that's not bad. Like, so a lot of people, I, I hate these people, you know, as I think the, I mean, yeah, I'm going to be straight. But there's going to be, you know, some of those women matches ain't going to be that good. I mean, you know, it's, it, you watch New York, some of their women's matches ain't that good, you know? I mean, but I think the majority of it, the women's thing will be good, I think, you know? Now, there's a lot of talent uh, that, on that. On the show, absolutely. That uh, that Perazzo chick, man, I think she's really good. Oh yeah, she's awesome. I've, I've been a fan of her since she was in uh, Ring of Honor. Yeah, when she years ago, you know, I always thought she was really good. Um, but yeah, I, I see. I think people ought to give it a try um, just to see the Burke belt. <laughs> that was, you know, um, no, I think that you know, so forty bucks for two two pay per views. That's not bad. Hope hope they get a good. Good, um, a lot of people buy it, you know. Uh, Nashville had a big uh, taping for Impact this week, didn't they? Just finished, yeah. Impact did a taping here locally in Nashville. I had like, I seen people post it like three or four days, wasn't it? Three days. Yeah. I believe it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I need to try to start looking at their stuff. Um, you know, you talk, I heard about um, Hollywood, Haley J. <laughs> uh, the reason why I know that, because on my spectrum, you know, uh, the bowl, local Bowling Green is showing OVW now. So I've been taping it on my DVR. I've been watching it. Uh, yeah, she's It's hilarious, man. She has a big tube sock. She has rocks in it. She's got her sock of rocks. She hits people with the game. It's hilarious, man. <laughs> There's some guys on there. Whew. They have some really good talent, and then they got some guys that do not need to be on TV. I mean, whew. Um, but it looks, I mean, production's good. They got this announcer. He, he, I think he's a DJ. On, I think he's a or something. He has. He carries a belt with him out to the during the announcing uh, for TV. Um, I'm that's kind of goofy, but um, so like I said, it, it's not bad for an for an independent. Like I said you got to overlook some of the stuff, but there's some um, there's some good talent. Uh, the Murphy Boys are up there. Uh, I think they're the tag champions. Um, Love those guys. They got this one dude. Oh, what's his name? Uh, oh, he does a not like a. I don't know if it's. Uh, I can't remember my name. Was he's like a kind of like a stripper kind of guy, but he is Jack and uh, and uh, Eric Darkstorm's up there, and he's he's team with this black guy who's just horrible. And the matches I've seen, and like Eric Darkstorm's better than that. I was like, he's trying to brawl. And it just don't look good. I'm like, he needs to, you know, I don't know, but yeah, it's it's pretty, it's entertaining. They just one dude, he's he's like about five five, and uh, he's in decent shape, but he's like five five, but he does like a super heavyweight gimmick. He's got the big the big bottle of uh, of uh, 
uh, supplement. You know, it's oh, it's hilarious. Um, uh, what's his name's up there? Um, uh, Cash Flow, and he's doing um, he's working a program with. I wonder if it's it's the guy used to be in TNA from India. Mahabali Shira, yeah. I think it's him they're doing a the program with. And then they, I've never seen the guy. I've seen him all over the internet uh, in Kentucky. And I've never seen it. The Reverend, uh, Reverend Ronnie, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, I know you're talking oh about. Oh, my. He is hilarious. Oh, he's tremendous. Oh, my God. I've never, like I said, I've never seen his work. Uh, he does these segments up there on there. And uh, like I said, I've seen his name for, you know, for a long time you know, on shows, but, you know, I've never spent this I've seen. He's on there, man. Oh, he's hilarious. <laughs> they did it. He was doing it, this thing, and they did a run in on his on his little TV statement. He was like, "Watch my plate now." He had his little tip plate, you know, the, the offering plate. He's like, "Watch my plate now." <laughs> I mean, he is hilarious, man. Oh, he's so funny. But uh, oh, it's it's like I've been watching it for the last probably three weeks. Um, and, you know, it's like any independent. It's got good and bad. But there's some I, there's some stuff on there's some guys I mean it's really good so I've been watching it it's got you know got some stuff I could you know not really care for but it's got enough stuff on there it's good you can overlook the bad you know it's so, all you can ask for huh it's all you can ask for yeah I mean it, you know it, it it's got some um they keep saying Jesse Goddard's but I haven't seen him on there I don't know if he there if he's up there or not but they keep saying I know he does work shows for them he may only work like their bigger events. Okay, because they keep saying his name, but he's never been, been on their TV in any of the shows I've seen. So, and they got two different. There's another thing I think is pretty neat is they got two different show TV shows. I didn't know that. Yeah, they they're not the same. Uh, they come on different nights. I think it's Friday night and Sunday. I think, and I think one's like late night, and they, they got two different names for them. But it's the same announcer, same people. But it's um, but no, it's not bad. I mean, um, I said, I've never really watched any OVW. Uh, and gosh, forever. So it, it, it's a little something different, you know. I just can't, I'm surprised that they got there on Bowling Green TV, but hopefully stay on. This it, like I said, it's pretty entertaining. Um, while we're talking about stuff, go check out Monty's WMF page and WMF uh, Medium Rare on YouTube. Yep, I think he's got what Tommy Big Fear gets uh, Bad Brad this week. I think it's the I, match I believe that be is there. the upcoming match. Yeah. So, um. I'm sure you'll, get, you'll see Brad get beat up with a chair. <laughs> um, so that's highly entertaining. Uh, when big figures hits people with chairs. Uh, yeah, I get a good chuckle out of that. So um, I'll take a gander at that. And um, so go to his thing, like and subscribe. Is that it? Yeah, like and subscribe. All right, I'm catching on. Uh, go visit Scott Till of a crowbar press.com. I guess that's what you call it. Crowbar press. Yeah. Crowbar press.com. That's it. Yeah, go over there and check out what Scott's got. He's got a little bit of everything. Uh, check out my UWA Luthes 1976 Facebook page. I'm putting some on there every day. Um, you, you picked a really uh, weird name. What? He's like, UWA Luthes 1976. Well, I mean, what should I, what was I, I didn't want to Universal Wrestling Associate. Ah, good gosh. I mean, man, those have been and they probably still are, you know? But everybody knows the 19th If you know history, if you know Luthez, you know, remember his UWA 1976 promotion, which I found out some. I've been finding out a lot of stuff um, I had in my archives. I've had for over a year now. I don't even know. And I'm, I'm going back through them and finding some. I'm getting stuff ready to put on the page. I'm finding a lot of stuff about that promotion that I didn't know. Um, and I had already, and I had it just under my nose. Um, some interesting stuff. So. I try to, like I said, I think uh, last thing I put on there was the results from their first. Yeah, yesterday I put on the results from their first national show from March 2nd, 1976. Uh, they drew like 1,800 at the Municipal Auditorium. That was their first show in Nashville. I put the results on it. Um, oh, I got to put some on there today. I don't know what I'll put yet when I get off here. Uh, I'm going to look around through my files and see what I got. But I try to put some there, something on there every day, uh, trying to get some of the history out about that promotion because i was i've been so intrigued with it um anything you don't plug i let I me mean, know go to our pro wrestling tea site and grab a shirt if you'd like and uh just like and subscribe the podcast yeah i'm still trying to get our some more t-shirts made up i got one more place to check and if not i don't but um i'm having a lot of trouble trying to, trying to make a t-shirt that's weird 
But anyway, uh, I'm trying to think if I went anywhere this week to plug anybody. I don't think I did. No, I didn't get out of the house. Have I? No, I haven't been nowhere. <laughs> just try to, try to stay inside the house. But uh, you do anything interesting this week? Not a thing, man. I'm going up to to Cincinnati this weekend to see a friend. Uh, and then it'll just be training until I leave for St. Louis to be in the best shape possible. Um, when you go up to Cincinnati, don't eat so much um, Skyline. Is that throw you die? I don't allow myself one Skyline. <laughs> one Skyline dog, one Skyline bowl. That's the hard part. Um, <laughs> Which one are you going to pick? <laughs> now, what'll be hard, though, what'll be really hard is Grippos. The, the chips. Yeah. Yeah. I can eat an entire bag of those, no problem. And I'm I've never had them. Bag. Yeah, I've never had them, but I, I, you know, I see the advertising on the Reds game, so I'm a big Reds mark. So, yeah, I'm, so I know what Grippos are. Yeah, they're a chip. Never had them. Everybody says they're delicious. If you uh, if you watch the game Saturday, keep an eye out. You're going to the game. We are going to the game. Um, it's the Marlins. It uh, the after. Not only are we going to the game, the after game concert is nine. Oh, the nineties. Yes, yes, the nineties. Um, Vanilla Ice is going to be there. Yeah, Vanilla Ice, Rob Bass, Naughty by Nature, and one more, and I can't remember who. Um, um, but I can already tell you, we will be dressed appropriately. I bought a brand new pair of Zubaz just for this. <laughs> so be ready if you happen to see us. I'll be looking for you. I watch all the Reds games. I tell you, I DVR them, watch them, watch today's that today's sucked. But um, yeah, I was wondering if y'all was going to go to the game. I knew you said you was going to be going up there this weekend, so. I was wondering if you guys, yeah, they played the Marlins. Uh, yeah, I'll look for you. So, yeah. Yeah, they had the 90s cop. They're, I'm trying to hear who it is. Oh, man. Oh, crap. I know I, they were talking about t- today on today's game about the 90s concert. Uh, was it Belle Bib DeVoe? I Maybe? don't think so. No, it wasn't them, no. Oh, crap. I just watched it five hours ago. Let's see. But yeah, they've been... nice, Naughty by Nature, Tone Loke, and Rob Bass. There you go. <laughs> I know somebody just couldn't. Well, here's the thing, Tone Loke. That's really '80s. The, he his main songs were like '88, '89. So that's kind of pushing a little. But you know, eh, who's counting, right? right. <laughs> but yeah, I've been with somebody. I mean, it's like I said, they've been advertising every every night on the games, and uh, so that's cool. You have another concert. That's cool. All right. Well, we're uh, next week. We're going to Japan again. Um, anything you want to add to that? Nothing from me, man. All right. Well, if you're done, I'm done. Stick a fork in her. She's done. For Jeremiah Plunkett and Quentin Charisma. Hey, that's me. Thanks for listening. God bless. Bye-bye, everybody.